Welcome, everyone. It is a pleasure to have another event in our Exponential Digital Ethics series today. Our focus will be on the societal impact of digital ethics. And we have a, a very uh, important guest today, Ivana Bartoletti, who is joining us, as well as Dr. Jane Thomason. So all these elements, I think we're, all three of us are reflecting the ambivalence across the globe. I, I think I see um, in all the types of social media publications and, and the professional publications, similar ambivalence. Um, I wanted to touch also on um, an element that you mentioned, um, Jane, on, on trust in government and, and uh, how in, in your case, things in your country, things have changed compared to before. Uh, Ivana, you wrote a recent book. Maybe you can comment a little bit on, on your recent book and what drove you to publish it. Your timing was impeccable. And I, I know when you started writing it, you didn't know what's gonna come, but maybe you can share a little bit with our audience what was the original driver and then how you perceive the book to be received right now by audiences worldwide. I wrote, okay. uh, I wrote the book from th three different perspectives. One is, um, as um, as a um, as a feminist, so um, I wrote this book very much as um, as a um, as a feminist in the sense that I um, I can't I can see that uh, uh, with technology progressing the rocket speed and digitization and and the deprecation in society, um, I just feel that um, uh, especially at, when it comes to artificial intelligence, AI is much more than technology, but it's very much about power. And when it comes to power, I think there is a feminist approach to it. And we know very well as, as, uh, as women that, um, that the power hierarchies in society matter very much. And so I wrote this book because um, it's a sort of a feminist perspective because I want this power to be distributed more equally. And then I wrote it as a privacy person, but not because when I went into privacy and I was about, uh, I was about 16 or 17, I went into it with a very individualistic approach. You know, I don't want to be watched. I don't want to be seen. But then I realized over time that privacy um, is not really about that and that privacy is very much about the right to autonomy. And I don't necessarily uh, agree with, uh, with algorithms uh, um, um, targeting me on, on, on the basis of some very personal information or something that I is inferred about me. Um, I, don't, I, I have issues with the, the, the powers that algorithms are developing in, in relation to, for example, online manipulation or um, the predictive algorithms in relation to the ability to really construct a reality and, and define the sort of this relationship between the past and the future for individuals, some sort of self-fulfilling prophecies that I, that I worry about. Um, and I don't, I wrote it because I want people to talk about this. Um, I don't want, I don't believe that these issues um, should be limited to a to, to few people. Um, and, and sometime when we talk, you know, often when we talk about these things, say, oh, yes, this is so complicated. This is not, but it's really, it's not, you know, it's, it's not about the machines. It's about the humans who are creating them. It's about asking ourselves the fact that, that we can do something technologically doesn't mean that we want to do it as individuals. Um, and and sort of the power of, of, of algorithms in particular to edit, um, to curate, um, to somehow become gates to reality um, is something that, that I find very disconcerting. And, and privacy to an extent has gone from a very individual right to a more collective right to, 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 to not to be manipulated through dark patterns or through um, sort of um, a, a uh, um, uh, Jane was saying correctly before, you were saying, well, yes, people have to take on it more ownership. They need to understand that they've been uh, sort of willingly sharing data, but the reality is some, to some extent is that we had no choice and we still have no choice. And sometimes there's a, the, sometimes it's the, even the consent model is, is, is very much broken, you know, because we really haven't got that capacity to say yes or no to things. So we, we are drawn into it that either by necessity or simply because of, of a deceitful design of, of the way that these things are construed. So, so I wrote this because I really wanted to, to bring the element of power underpinning all this and, and, and really show to, to people in a very sim sim 
simple terms that um, that the the technolo technology is not neutral, that every single piece of technology is, is a techno-social artifact and breeds the context where it's deployed and breeds the context in which is uh, is trained and uh, fed data, which is in, in turn data is not neutral either. So it's, um, and the third element is about politics. Um, and that is because I do think firmly believe in in the role of politics and although over the past decades um, we've seen a big corporation playing a big role even as sort of infrastructure in in the world we live in and to an extent we've seen people losing trust in in, in government I do believe that um, that in in the role of, of governance and I do believe in the role of of, um, of good principles and in the, the the idea that we could eventually um, set up some some governance around the way that we're going to deploy um, these technologies and this is to me is absolutely essential and when people say I don't want to regulate it yeah I always say yes but we're not really regulating artificial intelligence I want to regulate the behavior around it and I really want to, to make sure that you know artificial intelligence is benefiting the world so the book is a, is really a testament to all the people working in this sector, but it's also the idea that I want people to be talking about these issues at the kitchen table, and I want it to become mainstream and not leave the discussions around ethics to a few people in in, in suits. Um, but I want it to be a topic for everybody. No, thank you, and, and congratulations for your book as well. And and I think it's fantastic to get these conversations on the table. Just a, a couple of points, you know, that I'd like to make. The first one is is again that thorny issue of governance. And I agree with you, and I agree that there should be government governance and regulation. A big challenge that I see all around the world is just the lack of knowledge and understanding, and even digital literacy that people who are our elected officials have. And so I think there is that challenge both for elected officials and for regulators about how they keep up and even understand what it is that they should be um, governing. But the second point, which I was very encouraged about, I was reading last week about a survey of 100,000 developers and 80% of the developers felt that they should be taking ethical considerations into the design of the technology that they were building. But again, I do think that there's a comment to be made that a lot of times, you know, the developers are highly scientific, you know, often a little bit on the spectrum, not necessarily fully understanding the context of what it is they're building. So I think there needs to be partnerships from the highest level to the level of building the tech with people who can help those devs understand what might be the unexpected consequences of what they're doing and the sorts of things, the ethical questions that they need to be answering about the tech. So I think there's a continuum and, and I very strongly feel at an organizational level, and I've made this point before, that we need to demand of CEOs that they are the ones who are being accountable for the technology that's being developed for them being ethical by design, for leading the ethical questioning and consideration about the products that they're developing. It's not the CTO or someone else down the track. It's got to be CEO led. Um, so I, I maintain that we've got a tremendous public information education um, gap that somehow we have to fill if we're to get to the point where we can have that sort of governance. Thank you. I really enjoyed both of your comments on this. And I can echo that um, definitely when we look at, at a global level, design thinking for emerging technologies, I think is, is one solution. And I wanted to get your thoughts also on, on another topic that has come up quite a lot uh, lately, which is the, the issue of developing smart cities. So on the one hand, developing smart cities and, and pushing the, the pace of developing a digital economy is very much welcome. We know that the World Economic Forum and the World Bank have huge alliances that focus on this. On the other hand, again, I worry if we don't have ethics by design when we build these new cities for the future, we set ourselves up a, for another uh, decade or century of, of issues or problems or challenges. 
So can you both comment on, if you could give advice and someone would really want to listen, how could we build these smart cities so that they have ethics incorporated and embedded into the fabric of the city? Ivana? Yeah, I mean, it, you're, you're totally right, Ingrid. I mean, it's, uh, the the potential of smart cities is, is is great, and and I um, and I think a lot of people would see the benefit when they see technologies being introduced in 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 their um, sort of um, in the management of, of 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 the city where they live. Um, I think just briefly, I think the main issue is, is, is again, is how to, to make sure that people have trust in the way the data is, is, is being handled. So the, um, there is one thing that I particularly like about the GDPR, which is the data protection by negotiation. So I always say when, when working on smart cities, it, it's, just, it's very important to do it with the people who are going to live there. And understand what people are going to uh, uh, comfortable be sharing to share, um, without being nudged into having to share, um, but also um, really making the most of the sort of the the privacy preserving technologies that we have at our disposal, and there are many. I mean, the coding privacy and, and privacy engineering is, is is although we still have a long way to go and they're still very expensive, but it is it is the way the, the way forward. Um, but I do think that the most important thing really, and I've seen it working, is to have that deliberation and to have that space where you take the time to really engage with citizens. Um, this is particularly important now at the time of, of, sort of the debate that we're having around facial recognition, which is a debate that scares me very much. And the reason why it scares me because people think that it can be solved with a technological fix. People say, oh yes, you know, once, once a facial recognition technology will be able to recognize black women and do it well, then, you know, what is the problem? But no, because the problem is it's not just the, 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 the mathematical problem, issue uh, is also deployment of technology because the thing I mean the, the sheer deployment of something like facial recognition technology regardless of how well it works or doesn't work can still be used to wrap surveillance around certain communities the, what, the reason why I'm saying this is because when we think about smart cities it's not just about technological fixes it's not just about the best tech that we've got out there or how to fix um, algorithms so that they work perfectly. The issue is what is the impact that the actual deployment of the technology will have on the spaces that we share together as individuals and citizens. And to me, this is a, the most important thing. And if there is a problem I've had with the whole ethics debate is that we focus so much on the data, on the technology, on the product, without thinking that actually it's not just about fixing a technological solution, but it's really about understanding what is the impact that that piece of technology can have on the way that we live and whether we want it or not, regardless of how well that technology works. So with smart cities, I think we, if done properly, it can be an amazing opportunity, a very pragmatical opportunity to engage in a meaningful discussion with the people in that place and say, what are we prepared to do? How is this going to change? And having people of all colors to discuss this, having people from all background, including the younger ones and including the older ones. So it's really important, I think, to if we wanna get this right, which I see the benefit of it, massive, um, I think it's really important to do this with the people who actually live in that place. Thank you. And, and I would just like to add the dimension of a gender smart city, because I, I think that it's really important that we look at what are the needs of women in particular, whether it's for safety or for movement around the city, when they need to be doing things and make sure at, at all aspects of looking at the different smart city processes and connections and so forth, we're thinking about the particular needs of women in that city. Exactly. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That's a topic that I'm very focused on and I'm doing several international projects. So I hope that uh, we can have this as a call to action and a shout out to those that are decision makers. I can't believe it, but we're almost at the end of our session. It just went by so fast. So I wanted us to close on one more uh, topic, which is I noticed a lot of discomfort um, in many when they have to discuss ethics, so they avoid it a lot of times. And instead, I see people trying to use the word purpose. 
So there's a very delicate and complex relationship between ethics and purpose. It, in my opinion, they're not uh, equivalent. They're very closely related, but I think it would be nice to hear your opinions about um, the trends that we see that a lot of companies have uh, set forth to promote that they're purpose-oriented, purpose-driven, that they are inclusive and care about societal impact. But what, in your view, and then we're gonna close, is the relationship between ethics and purpose and how do you think it can be balanced? Ivana? Um, it's an interesting question. And to be honest, I think purpose is part of a wider ethical approach. So if I work with an organization and if I say to them, you know, how are you gonna build your ethics in the design and by design, you know, one of the pillars would be purpose. You know, you need to, uh, you're not deploying a technology or you're not embarking in a project just because it's glamorous or just, but because it has to fit a poor purpose. And this is the problem that we're having with a lot of technology. <laughs> so so um, we are deploying it because it's cool but, and companies are doing it because, oh yes, you know, we have to innovate. But, but the problem is what problem are you trying to solve? Is that productivity? Great. Is that because you want to do something? That's fine. But it it's really has to be focused around the, the purpose of the, that you want to achieve. And then obviously, and then you move on to other things, which is around justice, and that includes privacy. But but I think purpose is part is part of um, of uh, of this. And I do take I do understand that companies may be fine may find ethics strange because they may say, well, you know, ethics is so relative. You know, we all have different ideas. We all have different. Um, but I think this is part of the problem, um, and this is a problem that we must address. And to me, purpose is, is one element of an ethical strategy, which needs to really incorporate the, the bigger impact that, that a particular project or built or organization or, or new piece of technology is having on the wider society. Thank you. And Any closing Maybe remarks, I, Dr. Thomason? Yeah. Yeah, just if I could add to that. Um, I mean, ethics are the foundational principles upon which we build our society and our organization and, and how we behave. There are a lot of technology companies whose purpose might not fundamentally in itself be necessarily a positive social impact. Let's think about financial services. They're looking at speed and efficiency and you know, faster settlements and, and reducing middlemen and so forth in financial settlements. The fact that they have our data, they're storing it on the cloud, um, there are privacy concerns, there are all sorts of other issues, means that we need to have them looking at the way they do their business with that ethical lens around transparency and justice and privacy and responsibility and so forth. So, so I, I mean, I guess there's a broader definition of purpose, which is it might be that we have a purpose to improve the planet and humanity. But I think, I think ethics and purpose are completely different, um, although purpose can be, you know, part of an ethical company's approach. And I just don't think people should be able to sidestep those basic foundational principles of ethics that any sound society should be based on. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed our, our uh, conversation. I think we touched on a lot of uh, complex issues. I hope this can be a shout out to many to also enjoy Ivana's latest book. And uh, I wanna thank you both for sharing your insights, your expertise, and I hope we can have another session real soon.